Hello, in this video I'm going to review the basic mathematics of supply and demand, in particular as it applies to excise taxes. Let's say that we have a market where the demand side is given by the following equation. And the seller side, the supply side of the market, is given by the following equation. In this basic supply and demand framework, uh, let's go ahead and try to find the equilibrium quantity and the equilibrium price. Equilibrium quantity occurs where the plans of the buyers equals the plans of the sellers. That is, buyers want to buy the same exact amount that sellers are making available for sale. In other words, quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. So to solve for equilibrium quantity, we're going to set both of these equations equal to one another. Quantity demanded is 40 minus 1 half P. Quantity supplied is minus 20 plus 1 half P. We got one equation and one unknown, so let's solve for the P. And what we're going to end up with is 60 uh, equals 60 equals P. That is going to be our equilibrium price. Uh, the 60 is coming from adding 20 to both sides, so 40 plus 20 is 60. And if we add a half a p to both sides, one half p plus one half p is just p. So equilibrium price is sixty dollars. The equilibrium quantity is found by taking the sixty dollars and plugging it back. Oops, plugging it back into the p term in either the demand or supply equation. So go ahead and doing that. Forty minus one half p. Well, p is as we determined is sixty. So we get 40 minus 30 or 10. And we could do the same thing by plugging 60 back into the supply equation, minus 20 plus 1 half times the equilibrium price of $60. Uh, once again, we do get 10. Equilibrium quantity is 10. So we kind of establish our benchmark case here in this market without any taxes. What we'll do now is we'll impose a tax on this market. In fact, we'll impose it on the seller side of the market and then see what happens to prices and the equilibrium quantity. We're going to have an excise tax. Call that tax uh, T and let's set it equal to $10. Like I said, what we're going to assume here is that sellers are going to be responsible for collecting and submitting this tax to the government. Every time a seller sells a product, they will then have to submit a $10 check to the government. In this framework, and this I think is the key to solving these tax problems, is to recognize that the price that sellers now receive in the face of taxes, which I'm calling P subscript S, will equal that the price that the buyers pay minus T, the tax. In other words, when there's a tax in the market, if the buyers were to give sellers, say, $30 for a unit, and then the seller would have to then submit a check to the government every time the seller sold that $30 unit, we're going to have this equation describe that relationship. So the price that sellers receive will equal the price that buyers pay for the product plus the tax that the seller has to submit to the government. So let's go ahead and see how that affects our demand and supply equations. We're no longer going to just write P in here for that the price that the buyers pay. In the face of taxes, we're going to recognize that the price that sellers pay is not going to equal at the end of the day the price that sellers receive. Because as I said, sellers are going to be paying part of that consumer's price to the government in the form of a tax. On the seller side of the market, we're going to have a similar thing happen. We're not just going to write minus 20 plus 1 half P, it's going to be 1 half P subscript S, the price that sellers receive after submitting the tax to the government. Now we can go ahead and we can uh, 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 solve this like we'd solve any other 
equilibrium problem, setting quantity demand equal to quantity supplied. And now it looks like, well, there's a problem. We've got one equation, but two unknowns. In order to get out of this dilemma, we're going to have to substitute out PS for PB minus T. So I'm going to go ahead and put this expression in for PS. So the price that sellers receive is the price that the buyers pay them for the unit minus the tax paid to the government. Go ahead and simplify this a little bit more. In this next step, all we're going to do here is plug in $10 for the tax, and then go ahead and simplify this. We're going to get minus 25 plus 1 half price that buyers pay. This minus 25 is coming from 1 half times minus 10. That's just minus 5. So 1 half times minus 10 is minus 5. So minus 20 plus a minus 5 is minus 25. Now we'll go ahead and simplify this on the next page a little bit more. And we'll get, well let me just rewrite it one more time adding 25 to both sides and then one half B to both sides in the face of a tax buyers are now paying sixty five dollars for each unit sellers are going to get that sixty five dollars and out of that, you're going to give $10 to the government. So sellers at the end of the day are left with $55 for selling a unit. So we pretty much did the hard work. Uh, the only thing left would be to get the equilibrium quantity. And we can do that by substituting this 65 back into the demand equation. If you do that, you'll get 40 minus 32.5 or 7.5. So that should be the equilibrium quantity if we did our math right. Uh, the way to verify this is go ahead and take this $55 and plug it back into the supply equation. And indeed, we get an equilibrium quantity of seven and a half. So that's how you solve uh, tax problems. I hope you found this video helpful.